Hi, I'm Timo Harpo, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can create Grasshopper scripts that are quite a lot smoother to work with and give a better user experience by using global variables, something called the sticky library. Um, and I think the best way to do that is by showing you a little example of the problem we're actually solving. So if we look at this little grasshopper example here, we have a, uh, well, we're basically creating a, a box. That's all we're doing. And then we have some calculations that take a lot of time. So this is often how our scripts are. Like we want to change a variable here. We can see when we drag this slider, it's just really slow to work with. Then what we often end up doing is we double click and just type the value we want to try. And then it, it changes. So yeah, this, this kind of works in a lot of cases. This is okay. Um, but it, it's not often a very ideal solution. So let's look at the next one. Let's turn this off. Then we look at this one here. So this one essentially does the same thing. I'm actually just going to take uh, this one here. Add it to the group. Um, turn on and turn on. So in this situation here, we can actually make changes exactly like we want to. And uh, then when we are ready to do the analysis, we can put data through this uh, stream gate here and then do the calculation. And this is honestly often the best solution um, because you can like turn the path of the data on and off using this stream gate. So this is a good solution. But then we come down to a bit more funky solution using these sticky variables. I'm just going to turn it on here. So what you can see here, we have two completely disconnected parts of a script. And how that works is that if we run this part of the script, then you can see it's basically what we had before if we for a second forget about this one. So we run our variables into uh, this create box and we show a wireframe. So we show exactly what we did up here with this part. So we can change the variables and we can see the outline changing. But then we have this grasshopper script here. Let's see if we look inside. I have uh, just actually four lines of code. You can copy paste this here, import script context as SC. Uh, we don't want to worry about what that is. Uh, all you want to worry about is that if we type SC sticky and then a uh, square bracket and then whatever we want, uh, then we can set this name, whatever we want to be whatever value we want. It can be anything. So this is, uh, this is really quite useful. So now we have defined these length, width and height with three different names, and we can now access these variables anywhere in the script. So let's just run this and say, okay. Then we have the second part down here that actually does the calculation. You can see now we actually have two different geometries. So now I want to trigger this one. Let's go in and see what happens here. This Python script does the opposite thing. It says that the output here length is equal to script context sc sticky length. So we're basically are writing some global variables here and we're reading them again down here. And you can see I have this trigger going into the Python component and I never use the value of that one. Um, I basically just know that whenever something comes in to this component, it will force this to recalculate. So let's see, press okay. Oh, I can see it recalculated. We can change this here. And uh, then we can press the button and it's updating. So this gives me possibility to keep the old analysis results and 
do some changes, have a preview that makes sense of those changes, click update, and then it will update the information with the global variables. What you will notice here though, is that a button is not very nice. Let's put a data recorder here and see what actually comes out on the other side. So you can see here we have one mesh. Then uh, when I click this button, click, See, we get one more mesh and we get one more mesh. So the script is running both when we click the button and when we release it again. So this actually takes twice as long as it should because it's running twice. To avoid that, we go down to this little bit down here. Let's turn it on. I'm just gonna hide this up here. Uh, so this one, basically does the same as this one up here. We can press, turn this one on, change some input here and we can press go. And then it changes. I just wanna show you the difference here. I'm gonna to get to why it's different, but let's put a data, oh sorry, a data recorder in. And uh, let's have a look, let's press once. We get a mesh through and only once. That's because we have a data dam here. A data dam uh, stops the data from, from flowing. And then when we want to, we can send the data on. So in this case, I've set a little delay of 0 0.25 seconds. And that means that when I click the button here, that data is stopped at the data dam. I release the button, that data is also stopped at the data dam. And only after a quarter of a second is that data sent on. So let's just look at a data recorder here and a data recorder here. Look at what we have inside. We actually don't care about what we are sending into this trigger. It could be anything for all we care. But let's just look at this. You see that this one sent two values, but only one value got through the data dam. So this is a little smart trick to make this retrieving the information twice as fast. We could also use a Boolean toggle if we want it, but it's just not very, oh, like this here, sorry. It's just not very intuitive to kind of trigger something with a toggle. That doesn't really make sense, does it? Anyway, this is how the sticky variables work. You can access them from anywhere in the script and you can write them anywhere in the script. But you have to be very careful because you're disconnecting two parts of the script. So if you're not very strict with when and how you update them, you may end up using data that's not updated. In this case up here, you saw it, that hey, we actually have something that's not our input values. This is exactly the point we want, but it's also something that can be a bit dangerous if we don't use it carefully. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much for watching this video.